So, okay, say someone accepts the idea that life is a video game. Yeah. What, what is, uh, how then should we live? How, how would this understanding change the way that we view the world, how we view each other, and how we view ourselves and, and our place in this world? Well, the first thing a metaphor like this does, and, and science and philosophy is built exclusively upon metaphors, the only thing that makes science different in a way is that, you know, they're measurable and we have a record of them. But as far as that is, is that we're really all playing with metaphors here. Life is a video game. Uh, as a concept is, is, a, is a new level of magnitude to begin to look at the human condition and look at personal existence as a whole. I mean, once we get into that level, I mean, it's, it's, it's really just exactly like a video game where you take that step back and suddenly you can see the back of your head and then you're looking at yourself outside of yourself and then you can, in a way, not be so enmeshed with, you know, the local rumor and hearsay that you're rubbing up against in the form of ideologies, whether they be, you know, philosophical, scientific, personal, religious, uh, or what have you. In that element, it's valuable, definitely. On the other hand, it also gives us some heavy metaphors to begin to play with, you know, problems like free will, choice. Those are, that's really it for me. It's choice is really my crisis. And we're in a constant state of the crisis of choice. Um, Really, I don't think, I don't want people to sit there and accept that life is a video game. That's exactly what I wouldn't want people to do. What I would like to do is get people to investigate the particular model that's putting this forth, and that's Tom's model. And uh, that's the My Big Toe, My Big Theory of Everything um, by Campbell. He's a NASA physicist, DOD physicist. He's a really serious heavy hitter, private consultant, that kind of thing. Um, so he's coming at this from a background, and he's the same way. He's like, don't trust me. Don't find out for yourself. The big thing of finding out for yourself about whether or not this is true is that I think it's going to add a new level of engagement. Like right now, human beings mostly are, are salivating to constantly entertain themselves. And, uh, you know, one of the ways we do entertain ourselves is through video games. But at the same time, I feel a kind of that there's a sort of ubiquitous disengagement with life. There's a lot of fear. There's a lot of um, sort of repeating yourself, sort of getting stuck in a loop. And this is a way, I think, to kind of dislodge, this metaphor is a way to dislodge you out of that crisis and to begin to explore like, hey, well, well, you know, what if, what if this is a video game? Am I living my life? You know, but I definitely don't want people to just take my word for it. I really want people to investigate what I'm, what Tom and many others and, you know, by association, me are putting forward. And what we're putting forward is that there are certain experiences available to human beings that aren't being popularly engaged. And um, personally, I believe that it's something we should be doing more of. In other words, we feel a lot of emotions, but we don't really investigate the hows or the whys or so on and so forth. We have a lot of experience, but we don't get into the kind of brass mechanics. In other words, like, what can we really do as a conscious entity? That question is surprisingly um, uh, scant in uh, the dialogue. The dialogue is sort of like, well, I'm a human being, and that's sort of dropped. And as true as that statement is, it's also not true, because a human being, when you say that, you don't really investigate. You just kind of, you know, slide it under the rug and say, okay, I'm a human being, da 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 There's human nature, and I always say human nature is a bad idea that goes on to legitimize worse ones. It's sort of a stop, like you stop at human being. We don't really go forward. We don't investigate. One of the big charges that Tom and others like Russell Targ and Rupert Sheldrake and uh, guys at Pear Labs in Princeton and the people at the Monroe Institute and all the places around the world, what they're putting forth is that consciousness is non-local, right? That means it's not in your head. That means it's not like a byproduct of your brain or your entire body right here. It's something else, and it can do more things. And one of the ways I started investigating whether or not Tom's claims were true was I got into remote viewing. Now, remote viewing for people who don't know what remote viewing is. Remote viewing is a practice that a laser physicist named Russell Targ, who's a PhD, worked at Lockheed Martin, 
and Hal Puthoff, a PhD who wrote, I think, a textbook on quantum mechanics or some related thing to that, they um, ended up doing psychic research at Stanford Research Institute in California for the CIA and then eventually the DIA and the NRO and a bunch of other people. And they proved conclusively over and over and over and over again that remote viewing is real. And that's a thing where you sit in a room and you begin to describe an object or a phenomena happening in a place that you shouldn't know about. In other words, I'm sitting here and I'm going to know all about where you are in California. And now, to the average person, that's wacky. You know, to the average person who's been raised with, what, rational materialism, that doesn't make any sense because the mind is a byproduct of the brain. Consciousness is a byproduct of the brain. But we have decades and decades of research to show us now that consciousness is more like a, it's more like that we're engaged in a cosmic Google and that all of us are, all of consciousness is a kind of con cosmic Google and we're all filtering down into these bodies, into these physical bodies in like a Sims-like situation. We're all playing the Sims. Uh, it's human life on Earth. Tom calls it PMR, physical matter reality. Um, but we occupy both places at the same time. So one of the things about life as a video game is to get people to engage this and to see that this is real. Not only is it real, but it's natural to us. Not only is it natural to us, but it doesn't require a lot of training. In fact, a lot of us are doing it all the time. You know, we know who's about to call us on our phone before we do. 